for me at least, yesterday was that the transition to the, a low carbon economy wasn't going to be smooth. And what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, how we can respond to that in the monetary area. I want you to think about where, how money comes into a community like this. There are basically three ways. One, we can earn it in. You know, the, the, the community sends goods and services uh, out, outside uh, and money comes in in ex exchange for those. Secondly, it can come in as a result of social welfare payments, pension payments, uh, interest on investments. And thirdly, it can be borrowed in. So the money that we borrow from the banks to finance houses and so on is essentially coming from out from outside. Uh, it, your savings go into go into the bank, but the bank is the bank is cent centrally controlled. Now think about what might happen to that money supply in a chaotic transition period. You can't rely on your pensions coming in. The social welfare system gets di difficult. Government government funding uh, uh, falls falls away. Cutbacks have to be have to be made in that. Markets become difficult to sell your goods and services out outside. And even though the banks might have money there, they're not prepared to lend because they think it's risky, and you think it's risky too, and you, you're, you're not prepared to borrow. So in other words, your, the amount of money in circulation in this area is going to shrink, because all the time we're buying goods and services from outside, so the money supply in the, in the area shrinks, which makes it more and more difficult for us to trade with each other. And that's why the transition towns have targeted, uh, some of them, the Totnes, uh, Stroud, Bri Brixton, Lewis, ha have come up with the idea of having their own money. And I think that this is one of the basic things that any transition initiative should try and do. You, you need to provide uh, a complementary currency to supplement the national currency uh, if the national currency supply becomes inadequate. This is a, a, ba a basic tool. Unfortunately, I think they've chosen the wrong model because they have based, uh, let's say, the top the topness pound, uh, the Brixton pound, on the sterling pound. Uh, so you, you you get your top nest pound by buying it with a sterling pound, and the sterling is put in a bank to make to make it exchangeable. So the two are still are still linked. There's no new money created in the community because of that. So a new model is needed. We need to create money within our communities. Uh, in a new way that's not based on the pound and that doesn't necessarily have a fixed exchange rate with the pound. Because as the pound gets scarcer and scarcer, we don't want to have to limit the, the, our own money supply so that uh, it maintains its value with the pound. So the transition initiative uh, in Kilkenny uh, in Ireland, uh, future future proof Kil Kilkenny uh, is working with Faster, my organisation, and we're planning a, a currency uh, that will go into circulation on a, a debt-free basis. And the key to this initiative uh, is the involvement of the county council, the borough council and the Chamber of Commerce. Because what you need with a money system is critical mass. What gives value to the money that you've got 
is the number of other people who are prepared to accept, accept it from you and accept it without question. Let systems, you know, 20 years, 20 years ago, never really grew beyond a, a, small, a small group. They were never accepted by m many shops. They were never accepted by the council uh, in payment of local taxes. In, so we need to get this critical mass. And so the way that the Kilkenny Cats currency will go, in, will go into, in, in, into circulation, and I must emphasize that there are a, a number of barriers that we've got to get over before then. But what is planned is that the council will spend the new money into circulation by paying its employees. So if you're a council employee, you will be asked, look, the money that we're getting from central government, the money that we're taking in, in rates, has, uh, uh, has fall, fallen off. Uh, the choice is this, you either go on short time, or will you take 10% in the new money? And you will know already that the new mon money is acceptable in the local shops. Um, why will the local shops accept it? Because they know that they can pay back uh, in terms of uh, their business rates, their water charges, their refuse charges, and motor tax, because motor tax in Ireland is co collected by local government. Now this money is going to be purely electronic. Uh, and the, the, so if you agree to accept that, when you make your first few transactions in it, you're given a bonus for agreeing <coughs> to part participate in, in it. Uh, so it's on your mobile phone or you, you, you have the equivalent of a plastic a, pla a, plas a, plas a plastic card and it's a purely electronic transaction so when you make your first payments to a shop you get a text message on, on your mobile phone to say you've been given a bonus and your account balance is this level and so the, the basic circuit is from the council through council and employees to the shops and back to the council but the businesses will only get bonuses. They won't get bonuses on payments back to the council. They will get a bonus from developing the system. And so if they pay their employees, they will get a little bit more. If they buy from local sources, they will get a, a little bit more. And all the time we should be looking at the amount of money in circulation in comparison with the amount of trading going on. And if trading is increasing, we can give a little bit more into circulation uh, and if it's decreasing we need to take it out so if you're trying to save this money uh, and we need to take money out of out of circulation then any bonuses that you've had in the past we're going to be taking away just to give you a little a little nudge this is the sort of money that can could only have be set up now because you know, 10 years ago, we, would, we wouldn't have the, te the technology for this. Now, that's one money we need, but we need a second money. And this was really what I was asked to talk about. Because the other thing that transition initiatives want to do is to secure the local en a local energy supply. Because the price of energy is going to rise and rise and unless the energy comes from your own area then the amount of goods and services that you're going to be sending out of your area uh, is going to increase and increase. You're going to have to be sending more, more and a greater and greater proportion of everything that you're producing and you're going to be competing for your energy with every this diminishing global supply of energy with, with everybody else in the world. So the second target that a, a transition initiative should have should be develop your local energy sources. But where is the money uh, for this to come from? And you need a second type of money for that because the first type of money, the one I've just described, is a, is a trading currency. It's not a savings currency. We, 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 dis, we discourage people trying to hang on to, on to it 
that's there to spend. So the idea with the financing of the local energy supply is to say to sell energy bonds. In other words, we don't just borrow the money. It would be a mistake to go to, to go to the bank, even if the bank would lend, and say we would like to, to borrow a million uh, to invest in this windmill. Uh, because we don't know that we're going to be able to get access to a million pounds plus interest in the future to be able to pay that, that, that loan off. What we do know is that the community energy company that we're setting up is going to have electricity to supply. So what the, what the energy bonds are uh, is uh, a promise to pay back in the thing that the energy company will have in abundance, electricity. Now you don't actually have to get cash, it's a guarantee that you know, if I buy an energy, an energy bond, uh, let's say for 10,000 10, kilowatts in 2015, 20, 20, 20, I don't actually need to take delivery of that electricity in 2015. I get whatever price the company, the ESCO, is charging for that. Now this Three more minutes, right. This idea of energy bonds comes from Great Barrington uh, in, Mass in Massachusetts, where uh, 25 or so years ago, the owner of a, a delicatessen on the main street couldn't borrow 5,000 from the, the bank uh, to move premises. Um, so he decided that he would borrow it from his, his customers instead. Uh, and so essentially he pre-sold his sandwiches. He had these printed up. Uh, you can see the, the date they're valid after. So he knew when he was going to move. He didn't want all the demand for pre-sold sandwiches to come in on the first month. So he, he, sold, uh, he sold some for delivery in October, some November, so some December and some January. And of course the price changed. If you were buying sandwiches for delivery in October, uh, you paid less than the, the, ten, the $10, but you might have paid nine. If you were buying them for delivery in January, you might only have paid uh, eight uh, for, the ten, for the $10. That's exactly the ap approach uh, that uh, a, trans a transition initiative might adopt in pre-selling in pre pre its energy. What it does mean, it can sell these bonds, not just in its own, own community, but essentially anywhere, anywhere in the world. And the community, as it buys the elect electricity, uh, uh, it will in fact then take over uh, the, as the assets. So, so the system would be selling into, into the grid, but it would be uh, then billing people and buying in bulk back from the grid. Now that can, that can be done in Ireland. I don't know whether it can be done here, and some, somebody in the, in the audience might tell us. What's necessary for this to happen on a large scale, and this is one of the things that I understand that WINAC has good contacts in the city and might be able to take it forward. What we need is an organisation that stands between the local ESCO uh, and poten potential investors and in assesses the project, makes sure that, that it's sound and c makes a market in the, en the, en the energy bonds. So, uh, it, would also be, it would also be possible, uh, you, you, need, you need sterling uh, for, to buy your wind turbine, but you can also sell some of the en energy bonds for your local, your local currency too, because that would enable you 
to pay for the contractors, the, the manual labor, the local uh, costs there. So together, the two would give you a form of savings. You're saving in something real, not a paper asset somewhere in the world. You're saving in something that is going to supply goods and services, in, in, in this case electricity, but uh, it can be, uh, it, you, can, you can widen this, but uh, you're, you, you've also got an exchange currency that the more you use it, the more valuable it comes, and just like a telephone, uh, you know, if there's just three or four people that you can reach on the phone, that phone isn't much value. The more uh, the local system develops, the more the local economy develops, and the more valuable your money comes, and the more needs to be put into circulation. So by adopting a very radical approach to money, and not allowing us ourselves to be limited by the supply from outside, we get a new degree of freedom uh, for our communities. Thank you.